Hey guys, Erica here with Tiny Acorn. Welcome back to my channel. So excited to bring you guys a new series that I'm going to be doing here. And it's basically just my favorites. Yeah, so I'm going to be sharing some of my favorites every month with you guys. And that's going to include all different kinds of things. So not just fashion, although I might talk about like different trends that I'm into or different pieces that are you know, exciting me, but, um, I will be talking about all different kinds of things like books, podcasts, music, plants, um, things that are inspiring me, people that are inspiring me. Um, so I'm excited about this because it's just going to be more of like a chatty kind of like show and tell type of video. I've always loved sharing things that I like with people. And so this is where I am going to be doing that. So hope you guys will stick around. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to subscribe. All right, favorite number one. I'm gonna start out with a fashion item. Um, that is overalls. I finally got a pair of like real, real overalls this Christmas. So I got two pairs of overalls. I got a pair of black Levi's overalls that are really cute. I really like them, very classic. And then I got a denim pair from this brand called Likey Wolf. I will link both of these pairs of overalls down below. But um, what I love about the Likey Wolf ones is that they have so much like vintage influence in their design. Of all of the overalls that I've ever seen, you guys, this is the best pair of overalls, like in every single way, just the fit, the cut. I just love them so much. They are a little bit higher of a price tag, but I felt like, you know what? I'm gonna treat myself for Christmas. <laughs> So I ended up getting them. And then of course you guys know these overalls that I've worn since my second trimester. Um, the brand is Lay Liss. You guys have asked me about this pair of overalls so many times. What brand is it? What brand is it? What brand is it? So now I'm telling you guys, I don't think that they still make these, but you might be able to find a pair online if you search on Depop or eBay or something like that. So overalls have been my jam lately. I love styling them with like puff sleeve stuff, like all about the puff. Um, I love styling them even with like sweatshirts underneath. That's really fun for the winter time. Um, long sleeve, mock neck, turtlenecks, um, anything with like a ruffle or a collar or anything like that. Um, they're just a lot of fun to kind of play around with in your wardrobe. And since this year we've been keeping things super casual, I feel like overalls are a great way to do that and still have fun with your wardrobe. Okay, so my second favorite is a beauty product. I was sent a few products from the brand Good Molecules and I've been using them probably for like six months now and absolutely love them. So one of my favorites is their hyaluronic acid. I use just like two drops on my cheek in the morning and at night. And that has honestly helped so much to give me more of like a glowing look to my skin because um, during my pregnancy, I noticed that like my skin was just getting so dried out and just flaking and just not good at all. And so the hyaluronic acid is actually naturally occurring in your skin already, but due to kind of like the natural aging process, it increased exposure to like UV radiation from the sun, pollution and different stuff like that. It can decrease the amount of hyaluronic acid in your skin. Adding some extra hyaluronic acid in actually helps draw moisture into your skin and it keeps your skin more supple. It also reduces the appearance of wrinkles and it makes your skin appear smoother. One of the reasons why I love this Good Molecules brand is because it's so affordable. It comes in at only $6, you guys, and this bottle has lasted me so long. I can't remember exactly how long it's lasted me, um, but I know over three months for sure. Definitely we'll link that down below for you guys as well. I also am very into their moisturizer for the face um, and some of their other serums and stuff. It'll be 35 in February. So I'm noticing that I probably need to start like kind of like taking better care of my skin and stuff. And so I've been adding this to my skincare routine and I've been loving it. Okay, you guys, so the next thing that I want to share with you is a book that was recommended to me by my therapist. It's 
It's called The Highly Sensitive Person. This is actually a national bestseller. It is by a Dr. Elaine Aaron. I can't even tell you guys how much this book has changed my life. Kind of like my whole life, I've been trying to understand myself better so that I can more easily navigate relationships and just kind of know who I am and be solid and secure in that and not feel like I have to be like anyone else. I wish I would have known about this book so many years ago, you guys. So in essence, being highly sensitive, which we'll call the HSP, the highly sensitive person, it is actually a genetic trait, you guys. So this occurs in 15 to 20% of people. And that's also true of a lot of different animal species. So basically you have a more sensitive nervous system than the majority of people out there. She has a test in here to find out if you are a highly sensitive person. I will read some of these questions. If you answer yes to any of these, there is a chance you might be highly sensitive. Um, other people's moods affect me. I tend to be very sensitive to pain. I find myself needing to withdraw during busy days into bed or into a darkened room or any place where I can have some privacy and relief from stimulation. I am particularly sensitive to the effects of caffeine. I get easily overwhelmed by things like bright lights, strong smells, coarse fabrics, or sirens close by. I have a rich, complex inner life. I am deeply moved by the arts or music. I startle easily. I get rattled when I have a lot to do in a short amount of time. I'm annoyed when people try to get me to do too many things at once. I try hard to avoid making mistakes or forgetting things. I make it a point to avoid violent movies and TV shows. When I was a child, my parents or teachers seemed to see me as sensitive or shy. If you answered yes to some of those, you might wanna consider buying this book and reading it further. Honestly, it has been so helpful to me. For someone that's an HSP, when you're traveling to work and your commute, you're hearing all these different people's conversations, there's music going on, there's the sound of the Muni or the bus that you're on, and all of these things are happening all around you, so much different stimuli. For somebody that's an HSP, we absorb all of that and it's very difficult to tune out all of the sounds that are going on around. Therefore, since we are absorbing and processing all of that stimulus, our energy levels are drained so much quicker. And that has been one of the main things that I have gotten from this book is understanding why my energy levels are not as high as my husband's and understanding like, what do I need to do to take care of myself to make sure that my energy be restored? So I'm a four, my husband's a seven on the Enneagram. He is very activity oriented. He's always wanting to go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. If it was up to him, our weekly calendar would be full like five out of seven days. Now I am the opposite of that where if we have one social thing on the calendar per week, like I am happy with that. If we do two back-to-back -back social things, like I have a hard time with that. I, I need time to sort of like recover and kind of have time to myself. One of the main things that this has helped me with is having tools to recognize when my nervous system's getting overloaded, when I'm getting overstimulated and over aroused, that's kind of the whole like HSP thing is trying to like regulate these levels of arousal. A lot of the character traits of the highly sensitive person really are not valued, even though they are gifts, they're actually seen as flaws by the world. Um, and it just totally made so much sense when I read this book. And I started seeing that like, wait a second, like this is a gift, not a curse. The ability to like deeply empathize with people, to process things like on a super deep level, um, to have like a rich inner spiritual life. Those things are needed in this world. And those are the gifts that the highly sensitive person has. Anyways, if anything that I have mentioned or said has sort of like rung true in your heart, I highly recommend getting this book. Like I said, 15 to 20% of the population has this trait. It's a genetic trait. So this isn't just like, oh, I, I feel a lot. This is like your nervous system is genetically different. It's more sensitive. Okay, so get this book if that sounds like you. 
Trust me, you won't regret it. All right, so on the topic of this HSP book, I was talking with my therapist about some activities that I could do that would help me sort of calm my nerves and just be kind of like zen me out and everything. And I am so excited about this. Okay. This is my adult coloring book. It has so many pictures in here of beautiful flowers and I've been coloring some of them. Um, <laughs> I have a bunch of gel pens, this 60 pack of gel pens. This has been my favorite new hobby. I have always been like an artistic person, but sometimes it's hard to just sit down at a table with like a blank piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and be like, I'm gonna draw something. It's like, well, what am I gonna draw? I don't know. So you don't even start. But this is great because I'm still using my hands, which is so therapeutic for me. I'm doing anything with my hands throughout the day, especially something that's kind of mindless. It allows my sort of subconscious to kind of work things out. Yeah, to be able to give myself space to think. And so that that way I'm not like going, 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 going all day. And then when I plop into bed, that's when I start thinking and working things out in my brain. And then I, you know, have insomnia and I don't sleep for like a couple hours. So this actually gives me that time and space for thinking, for reflecting, um, for kind of tuning out. Um, all of the crazy stuff going on in the world and just focusing on like, oh, what color do I wanna color this flower here? Um, what would make me happy? Ooh, I'll just draw this color, you know, or whatever. <sighs> Especially having a baby, you guys. It's so nice. I get a couple minutes here and there and I can just pick up my pens and start just coloring and kind of just tune out and as much as possible, you know, when Monty's taking a nap, um, it's just kind of have time for myself. It just has really helped my mental health and it just has made me feel like I've had an outlet for my creativity that isn't production focused. I mean, my Instagram and my YouTube is an outlet, but it's also an outlet that will be critiqued by people, um, which you know, I would like to do something artistic that is not going to be critiqued by anyone. That's just going to be what it is. And I'm just going to enjoy it. And I don't have to share it with the world. You know, this is just for me and myself. If you guys are interested, I'll try to find this book online and link it for you guys and link the gel pens that I'm using as well. Um, let me know if any of you guys out there do adult coloring books or something like that. I'm really curious to know. Okay, so the next favorite has been a YouTube video actually that I saw by this guy named Jordan Hawkins. He basically deleted his social media for a year and he shares his story. I will link it for you guys if you're interested in watching it. I highly recommend it, you guys. It made me think about what's going on with social media in a completely different way. I know that The um, Social Dilemma has been a very popular documentary and I actually still haven't watched it, but now I really, really want to because his YouTube video has stirred so much inside of me. And I think it's a combination of that and just also a combination of having Monty this year and being a mom and realizing how much I wanna be present with him. And I don't want him to just see me on my phone all the time and be like, wow, what is so special about that little box that she's holding? Why does she love that box so much, like more than me or whatever, you know? So I don't want to let myself get like sucked into these patterns that are unhealthy. I want to really think and be aware of when I'm on social media and when I'm not. Um, so since I watched Jordan Hawkins video that actually made the algorithm do something good for once, no, um, suggest another video to me. And this one was by absolute motivation. And you guys, there are some things in this video that straight up shook me. Okay. Let me just share some of these things that this video is saying. When you're on social media, there is a 400% spike in dopamine in your brain. 400% spike in dopamine in your brain. And that is roughly the same amount that you get from cocaine. Okay, let that sink in, you guys. These apps were made to be addictive. 
Another drug that releases lots of levels of dopamine is alcohol. What this video says in our culture is, yeah, you can have alcohol, but you know, you have to wait till you're 21. However, we are not doing that with kids. And so essentially we're putting a super highly addictive drug into their hands, social media, and they don't have any natural defenses built up to it. So they are just being raised on this. Um, the reward center in your brain that just keeps going off and off and off every time you get a notification, every time you get a like, every time you get um, a little chime or someone viewed your profile, somebody liked your photo, like that is actually setting off the dopamine in your brain. So if you think about this, that is very similar to when you go to Vegas and you play a slot machine and it's like, oh, you never know, like the next pull, like it could be a win. So when we're constantly checking our phone all day long, like, oh, look, let me see if somebody like liked my photo or something like that, then you actually are doing the same thing. It's like you're pulling that slot machine, just waiting for the win, waiting for the reward, waiting for that stimulus to be like, oh, I got a like, oh, someone messaged me. Going to Vegas and playing the slot machines for like three hours is one thing, but taking a slot machine home with you and engaging on it all day long from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, like that is what we're doing. And it's not good for our brains. It's actually short circuiting our brains. And this is leading to cognitive consequences like permanent you know inability to concentrate on anything it also creates like a background hum of anxiety um so just want to put that out there for you guys just like start thinking about these things you know because technology has slowly sort of crept up on us and the ball has just been rolling faster and faster and faster um that's what jordan hawkins talks about how when he deleted social media and then he got back on a year later how much faster it was how much more flashy and loud it was and more stimulating yeah so it's it's definitely gotten a lot more intense and i think it's definitely worth looking at to see like is this good for me i have been thinking those thoughts like is this good for me? Um, of course, you know that YouTube and Instagram, those platforms are what allow me to interact with you guys, to share with you guys. Um, but at the same time, I am aware of what this video says, that it is a fake, brittle popularity that in the end only leads to more feelings of loneliness, and feeling more vacant and empty than before when you started. So just kind of thinking about that um, has been something that I've been wrestling with. I've received so many wonderful messages about how I have somehow impacted your life for the better. And that is what makes me feel like there is something still worth doing here. If in some way I can inspire you or cause you to think in a different way or cause you to see yourself in a different way and love yourself more like that's what i want to do but i also feel like social media can be very damaging and very unhealthy and i think it's all about you personally and just recognizing your habits recognizing how often you're checking your social media how often you're on your phone and like making some decisions to create boundaries around that um, try to think of like some creative ways of like what you could do to minimize your time on social media. For me, I know that since I post a video once a week and I also post a photo on Instagram uh, once a day, um, I usually post in the mornings. Although that seems like really harmless, actually what's happening is instead of responding to everyone's comments like one time a day, I will do it all throughout the day. It's just not good. And so I'm trying to think of like, how can I, can I possibly batch out my Instagram posts so that I just do it all in one week and then I just have, you know, the machine post for me. Um, can I respond to comments maybe one time a day in, in the evening, like after dinner um, and allot myself a certain amount of time to do that. I've already turned off all my Instagram no notifications um, because I don't want any pop-ups no pop-ups thank you um i've turned off messaging from my instagram stories so oh my gosh that helped so much because i was just getting floods of people's reactions to my stories you know like hearts you know emojis and stuff like that and it would just fill my inbox up and i every single one of those i had to you know swipe it swipe 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 to like 
move that message along. And that in and of itself was taking up so much time. So I turned off those, that messaging ability. Um, there's other things you can do. I have a timer on my Instagram so that I get notified when I'm on it for a half an hour. I was talking to a friend and she was saying how she just obsessively checks her Instagram. I suggested to her, well, what if you deleted the app off your phone and then you use the app on your husband's phone? so that you wouldn't be tempted to check it all day long and that when he gets home from work, you would just check it then for like 10, 15 minutes because I'm sure he's gonna want his phone back. He's probably not gonna wanna let you veg out on it for an hour. So that's an idea. Do you guys have any ideas for how to like minimize or create boundaries around your use of social media? Please comment down below. I'm so interested in kind of just having this conversation because ultimately I just want 2021 to be different for all of us. I want us to be more aware, more conscious, more present, just trying to live our dreams and not just be looking at other people living their dreams, like live your own dream. Okay. I'm going to link both of those videos down below. Highly recommend watching both, watch them with your partner, send them to your family. You guys, we need to start talking about this and not just letting social media happen to us. Let's start the conversation about it. Okay, so I already shared my five favorites, but I have a bonus sixth favorite for you guys. It is my $700 plant. No, I did not pay $700 for this plant. I actually had a friend who got one of these a long time ago and she saw on Facebook Marketplace, somebody was selling a cutting of this plant for $400. And so she messaged them and was like, uh, did you actually get $400 for that? And he was like, yes. So then she started looking into it. You guys, this plant sells for seven, up to $750 on Etsy. It's so highly sought after. And that is this little baby right here, my variegated monstera. So this one is a small form albo variegated um, Monstera Deliciosa. I think I said that right. <laughs> um, so this is just a cutting that she gave me. Um, she was selling these for like $250 a pop. They made like over $2,000 on their plant like this, selling them. That is more profitable than a weed plant. So I'm gonna start hustling. I'm a plant this guy. And you guys, as soon as he starts growing some friends, I'm gonna start selling these. Make some cashola on the side. Anyways, it's amazing how expensive these plants are and how much they go for. It's crazy. Let me know if any of you guys happen to have one of these plants, how much you paid for yours and uh your story behind it i'd love to hear i think it's so much fun to just collect different house plants i'm sure there'll be more house plant content here on my channel especially on my favorites um i'd love to share more plants with you guys uh because that's something that i love in my house it brings me a lot of joy all right guys thank you so much for watching i hope this video was fun for you it was really fun for me i love just like sitting here and chatting and sharing with you guys things that i am enjoying and being inspired by lately so look forward to this happening every month and if you guys still have an instagram after you watch those two videos down below and you want to follow me feel free to follow me at tiny underscore acorn um love to see you over there but also not necessarily encouraging that. Um, it'd probably be better if you don't follow me and if you deleted your Instagram altogether. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, love you guys. Wishing you guys the best for 2021. Sending you lots of love and light and blessings. Remember that you guys are beautiful just the way you are. Bye.